soul or, or personalized identity. Amazonian, in Amazonian cultures, individuals are reportedly characterized as existing in, in a kind of cosmological economy of souls, to quote Viveros de Castro, where humans, human persons may become animal persons, tree persons, etc., in, in a transaction or a process of cosmological metamorphosis. Now, this, this way of relating to the world is, is central to various aspects of Amazonian life, um, including health, hunting, warfare, and acts of prophecy. How, however, these different categories are not necessarily so distinct in Amazonian life. For instance, disease and illness, including colds, infertility, and diarrhea, are, are often understood to indigenous Amazonians as, as being the result of praying attacks from various spirit beings, jaguar spirits, anaconda spirits, for example, and also as potentially as attacks from malevolent shamans or sorcerers. Furthermore, antisocial behavior such as envy, jealousy, um, and hatred may be perceived also as attacks from other than human persons or, or sorcerers, um, resulting in the antisocial behavior and potentially sickness too. Now, this process of cosmological metamorphosis in general is central to the arena of Amazonian shamanism. The notion that shamans may transform into various beings, such as jaguars, birds, or river dolphins, in order to conduct healing, sorcery, and prophecy has, has been widely documented as, exist, as existing not only in the Amazon basin, but also in the Andes and the Pacific coast of South America. So, indigenous practice, including, sorry, so indigenous ayahuasca practice, um, including practices of healing, are part of these larger Amazonian ways of relating to and understanding the world. Anthropologist um, Bernard Brubeck, focusing on the role of music in Shipibo culture, describes an ayahuasca healing ritual where through singing, the healer transforms himself, in this case, into an anaconda in order to perceive the ill-causing anaconda spirit that's affecting the patient. The healer identifies himself as the illness, that is the anaconda spirit, in order to gain control over it so that he may banish it and welcome the, the patient's soul back into their body, thus restoring health. In parallel, anthropologist Graeme Townsley describes a Yamanawa ayahuasca healing ritual where a shaman embodies a variety of, of animal and nature spirits or Yoshi, as the Yamanawa call them, including Anaconda Yoshi, Jaguar Yoshi, and Solar or Sun Yoshi, um, and through singing incredibly complex metaphorical songs to embody these spirits, um, um, directs the healing towards a patient, in this case, who is suffering from bleeding um, a few days after giving birth. And I thought I'd just like to add that in, in many cases, of the indigenous use of ayahuasca, the patient doesn't actually drink the ayahuasca. It's the, the, the shaman drinks the ayahuasca. And so it's been reported. So these are just two examples. But the, the notion of cosmological transformation appears across various types of South American um, shamanism, including non-ayahuasca traditions. Um, so the different morphologies or cosmological bodies such as human, jaguar, anaconda, sun, etc., are often discussed by indigenous Amazonians as, as being like clothing, skin, bark, or, or different types of layers which can be taken off, shed, discarded, or placed on and embodied. Layers which, which relate to social and ecological relations and, and of course health, as the two examples before showed. These cosmological layers are not limited to natural phenomena, but it, indigenous Amazonians also refer to various modern artifacts, such as outboard motors, radios, um, shotguns, and mobile phones, as being spirits, or, or as having a kind of spirit essence to them. And I'll, I'll return to this issue a bit later on in the talk. So now let's travel 2,000 miles um, to the east, to my homeland of Australia. Um, so ayahuasca in Australia is largely used by middle class white Australians who often associate their practice to indigenous traditions of the Amazon 
and therefore may be understood as a kind of folk vegetalismo tradition. The culture shows many similarities with the Western shamanic tourism boom currently happening on the edge of the Amazon. Uh, there's no strong, there's, sorry, there's absolutely no anthropological evidence on the use of psychedelics by Aboriginal Australians, aside from the use of the wide use of a tobacco-like psychoactive called pituri. However, Australia is home to a vast cornucopia of DMT-containing acacia trees. Um, for example, acacia acuminata, which um, funnily the Australian government or the local council shire in Western Australia is um, unwittingly propagating DMT by planting acacia cuminatas all along the side of the highway at the moment. Um, and in an age of prohibition, it's, it's, it's quite ironic. Um, sorry, I lost my spot. Yeah, and it's, so it's these, it's these trees, the acacias in Australia, which the Australian ayahuasca groups um, often use, sometimes with Syrian room, but mostly with um, Benisteropsis carpi, the, the ayahuasca vine, which is being grown in Australia. Um, and, yeah, I'll skip that bit. All right, so my research data on ayahuasca culture in Australia was collected over the last two years and consists of participating in around 30 ayahuasca ceremonies with seven different shamans, or, or facilitators, as they're called in Australia, um, along with 35 interviews and also 80 in-depth in online qualitative questionnaires. While there are Centrodiami and UDV nodes in Australia, my research is focused on the neo-shamanic ayahuasca ne networks, um, which include perhaps around three, three or 4,000 members. These, this is a hard number to the population to measure, and the figures are based on emailing lists numbers, but it doesn't account for the DIY, do-it-yourself movement where people are growing their own stuff or, um, or buying it off the internet. Um, so the, the ayahuasca groups in Australia embody various forms of religious or spiritual pluralism, often with links to Eastern religions and Western esotericism found in ritual music and, and philosophy. So why do people drink ayahuasca in Australia, or what are their intentions to do so? Healing and well-being are the big ones that stand out, and, and these experience, expressions rather are often inseparable to expressed um, religious or spiritual sentiments. The other main response to this question was, was that of seeking knowledge or wisdom. However, the lines between healing and wisdom are often blurred as the gaining of knowledge through ayahuasca revelations is, is regularly associated with a kind of spiritual health. Uh, the reported types of illness or malaise people are seeking to heal are most commonly a complex of issues related to stress, anxiety, and, and depression. Um, sickness and malaise is often understood by members of the Australian ayahuasca community as resulting from a disconnection of the person from nature and the cosmos, a kind of haunting cosmic individualism, perhaps. Participants report that ayahuasca works to heal this malaise by helping to reconnect the person to the world. Um, and in this sense, and, and sorry, this sense of reconnection is a central motive of people's ayahuasca experiences, which are often described as blissful moments of unity with the world. Closely associated to these experiences of reconnection are processes of spiritual purification. Illness is often recognized as energetic blocks in the body that are removed through violent processes of expulsion, vomit, uh, expulsion, vomiting, sweating, and purging as a means of spiritually cleansing the person, subsequently reconnecting them to the world. Um, so ayahuasca tends to be understood by Australians, Australians as being a female spirit being, often called the mother or la madre. Um, in terms of the phenomenology of ayahuasca rituals, people are having a variety of different experiences which I've broken down into three categories. Most people most of the time describe fluctuations in bodily feeling, internal pressure, along with perceiving geometric forms, an acute sense of hearing and other sens sensory modalities, while associating this to being surrounded by a kind of sentient nature, often spoken about as the spirit of ayahuasca, la madre ayahuasca. The next dominant experience in which people, uh, is one in which people hear messages spoken to them, giving them advice or, or counsel, divine counsel. And finally, a smaller proportion, though still quite significant, um, describe ecstatic flight and complex multi-sensory encounters with worlds and entities or beings. 
accompanied by synesthetic interactions with these spaces and beings. Now, this is not a complete cartography, but it outlines some of the dominant trends that, um, that people uh, discuss in reflection of their, their ayahuasca trips, journeys, rather. Um, so, while the notion of cosmological metamorphosis is central in Amazonian traditions, where shamans become jaguars, etc., this type of thing is very rare in Australian ayahuasca circles, where interactions with spirit entities are usually characterized by a separation and connection between the human and the spirit being, not by an immersion or, with an em or embodiment of the spirit being. I only found a handful of accounts that approximate something similar to the indigenous Amazonian notions of cosmological metamorphosis um, touched on before. Now, I'm going to finish by taking a somewhat philosophical turn. Um, and through exploring the notion of synesthesia, I'd like to put forth a hypothesis on the nature of cosmological metamorphosis. So synesthesia is a common trope of psychedelic experiences, not only of, of ayahuasca and LSD, ayahuasca, but also LSD, psilocybin mushrooms, and mescaline cactus, etc. Um, and it's generally, generally characterized as a kind of union of different senses. For example, people might see sound or feel vision in a tactile embodied sense or smell light, for example. In general, appro approximately 3% of humans worldwide experience types of synesthesia without the aid of, of psychoactive substances. Some common examples include taste or smell being experienced as, as colors or letters of the alphabet appearing as colors. And some studies suggest that artists are seven times more likely to be synesthetic and that synesthetics ha synesthetes have um, a better sense of memory. And of course, indigenous ayahuasca shamans reportedly embody various forms of synesthesia while conducting rituals. For example, claims of singing fragrant songs or, or patterned songs are not un un uncommon across the ayahuasca complex of indigenous Amazonia. Now, there have been some interesting developments in consciousness studies in recent years that show synesthetic experiences are not simply a kind of union of the senses, but rather are, embodied are an embodied experience intimately related to mental or semantic processes, thinking or, or meaning. For one example, um, researcher and psychologist Danko Nikolic found that when natural synesthetes who see, for instance, the, le the Latin letter A is red, when they're introduced to, to the letter A in a new language, a new symbol, once the connection is made that it's A, the new letter turns to red, um, suggesting a unique relationship between mental or semantic processes and sensual resonance or sensual unity. Therefore, Nikolic and others have put forward the notion of ideasthesia, that ideas color the sensory worlds of synesthetes. Um, and this notion of ideasthesia, or of a dynamic relationship between semantic functioning, that is the meaning of things, and sensory, experience, sensory experiences, offers some inroads to novel understandings of the notion of cosmological metamorphosis, often reported in Amazonian shamanism. When, ver when various Yamanawa shamans were asked, how do you contact the spirits, or the yoshi, including not just the animal and, and plant yoshi, but the yoshi of artifacts like motors and mobile phones and stuff, the shamans replied, we first study in detail the thing in order to find its yoshi. We then are given its song. Right? Now, the, the spirit of out, outboard motors, for example, are thought to be good for curing headaches given that the sound, or the yoshi, of the motor resembles the throb of the headache. Okay, I'll just quickly wrap it up. Um, so, the, yeah, and furthermore, jaguars are often known as fierce and powerful beings, only accessed by powerful, by, by powerful shamans, and other creatures such as turtles or certain insects that make ludic noises or gestures are at times associated to jokes and humor. Um, Rochelle Dolmatov and others have put forward the idea that spirit beings reflect a kind of quality of existence that is, that the different garments, skins, or, or barks, the different layers reflect different moods or qualities that are associated, perhaps 
um, semantically with jaguars, anacondas, rivers, etc., and even radios or, or shotguns. 